Nera. In the group one, Keeneland Phoenix Stakes, a field of five over six furlongs, and well away the favorite Whistle Jacket leads out his own ablaze, Babush just third from Rudy's Apple, and trailing the field, the end of a furling and a half is Shadow Army. It's Whistle Jacket joined by Arizona Blaze, the length in front of Babouche. Fourth is Rudy's Apple, and the back marker of the quintet. Heading for the halfway stage is Shadow Army. Precious little between Arizona Blaze and Whistle Jacket, upholding a one length advantage over Babouche in third, and then Rudy's Apple. And last of all is Shadow Army, order pretty much unchanged with two and a half furlongs to go in the Keeneland Phoenix Stakes. And it's Whistle Jacket, fractional leader from Arizona Blaze. Now been asked for more on the outside with Babouche trying to gain on the pair. Shadow Army gets reminders relegated to be last. The five is Rudy's Apple. It's the cold and the filly who come to the fore and Babouche hits the front from Whistle Jacket. Gone on by two lengths then to Arizona Blaze. Deep in the closing stages and it's Babouche in front from Whistle Jacket. Drop towards the finish. It's Babouche by length to Whistle Jacket as Babouche ups it to another level in the Caneland Phoenix for Colin Keane and Jill Lines. Whistle Jacket second. Here is our big race winning jockey Colin Keane. Colin, how much of a thrill was that for you? You've had uh, quite a week, haven't you? Yes, I know it's been a brilliant week. Our, uh, look, she's she's uh, we've always told a lot of her. She was a very very good winner in Cork, uh, and she was a very good winner the last day when it didn't go to plan. And I learned a good bit about her. I thought the last day I was keen to get her onto the, the heel of something today, and the two lads brought us along nice. And even though we were going along. She still travelled very strong and even maybe over travelled a fraction but from halfway she relaxed into it, got to them well and had a little bit of a look when she got there but no, she's obviously a very smart filly. I was just going to ask you about the star, were you kind of half happy to almost miss the break? Oh, I was, uh, that was the big intentions yeah because uh, like the last day when I look back at it we went very quick but riding her didn't feel that way uh, so hence why I was eager to get her to relax but she's a filly with a lot of natural speed uh, and makes her life easy. She seemed to switch leads a couple of times when you got to the front. Were you almost just nursing her home when the race was run? Yeah, pr pretty much. Yeah, uh, when I I was nursing her to, to get to ride, and when I had him covered, I, I didn't want to be too hard on her. I didn't think Anton was going to come from behind us. Uh, and as I said, she was, she was having a bit of a look, and she was getting the job done. So she's clearly got plenty of boot. How far do you think she might stretch out in distance and time? Well, I suppose she, she's she's similar to her sister. Her sister was like this as a two-year-old, very. Zerinsk, yeah. Yes, sorry, Zerinsk uh, used to want to please you all the time, but got better with racing. So I'd say in time she will have no problem going seven and maybe a mile in time, but six is a good fit for her for the moment. So many good juvenile fillies this season. It's quite something, isn't it? Yeah, look, we've it's it's, it's unbelievable the fillies we have this year. One one seems to be better than the other, which is hard to believe. Uh, look, we're just we've brilliant owners, right for a brilliant man. So we're very privileged. Colin, thanks so much. Well done again. Thank Cheers you. Ger Lyons with us now after a fantastic win from Babouche in the Keeneland Phoenix Stakes. Ger, today was a big, big day. How are you feeling now that it's been safely negotiated? Yeah, it's funny. I was more nervous for the Anglesey than I was for today, only because she went to sleep after Cork and I was sort of shooting blind going into the Anglesey. Um, she's learning on the job, as I said, and, and she's just been very straightforward from day one. We knew very early on in the year that we had one, what one meant. We wouldn't know until we we ran. Not at least one, I think. I, mean. I think we have, yeah. But until you run them, you never know. And you know, you know, like what it's like over here, Gary, who you're walking into every day of the week. And it's only when their careers are over that you look back and says, "Oh, that's why we got beat." Do you know what I mean? Like it's very, very competitive. So it's grand. It's good to get when you do get one to to score with them. And uh, she's just a, a pleasure to train. And I think her her biggest strength is her temperament. Colin said there were pretty much no surprises the way the race went. Were you happy with what you were watching all the way? Yeah, I never listen. I just, uh, you know, Colin's riding me. I think this is his 10th year with me, so he's always going to go out and do his own thing. I don't even know whether I ask him what he's going to do, but uh, it was always straightforward what Aidan was going to do with the Colts, and if ever you were going to get a good lead, it was he was going to give it to us. So nine times out of ten, you can't get past him, and we did, so good. She's a Group 1 winner, unbeaten in three starts. What could the rest of this year hold for her? I would say, subject to the, all the discussions that could be had and her staying in one piece, you would be thinking that Chiefly Park at this minute in time. Colin said there's no rush to separate up and trip, and I'd have to agree with him. I have no problem that she gets seven for the Moigler or something like that, but hopefully we'll have another for that. So, subject to what the discussions end up with, I would say that's where we'll be going. You've set it up beautifully for me. I presume that other one is Red Letter, who was runner-up to Lake Victoria on debut. Seen Lake Victoria win the Sweet Solaire over at Newmarket today. Is that where she's headed? 
At the minute, um, you would think it, but I mean, she's only won a maiden, albeit the maiden is working out every day of the week, and it looks a, really very much above average. Um, she did what I thought she'd do. Um, there's an argument that we'll go listed group three before we dive, you know, from a, from a maiden straight to a group one, and if we do that, it could go for Champions Weekend Ingleby. You know, we just could do that. Um, it's all about just doing the right thing about her because she's not a now horse, she's a next year horse. Yeah, and if it is to be the Moy Glare, is there any chance she could run between now and then or no. very unlikely? No, no, the next race, her next race will be her last race, I would say. Mm. Um, and we want to give her as much time as possible between runs. And I mean, for her to do the Moy Glare, I'd want to be pretty adamant. And there's a lot to be said for going baby steps. There are two crackers. Have you any more to unleash in the next few weeks? I have about 16 at home that are <laughs> at about that level. <laughs> I'm only 30 years waiting for these ones to come around. No, uh, it's no. These are, these are few and far between. But I tell you what they do. They they make the job easier. It's easy to get up in the morning to to train these horses. You know. Jerry, it's been a great week as well. We saw Muda Saref deliver for you again at Leopard Sound during the week. Has he rolled out of it well? Yeah, he's a legend. Oh, Jesus, I remember back in the day, Dermot Weld used to train a horse. Famous name. Famous name. He used to mop up, didn't he? He was a rock solid Group Two horse, and I used to look at him in awe and wonder, imagine having a horse like that. But this is a rock solid Group Three horse, as is Power Under Me. But they're just they're horses of a lifetime to have, and especially him because he's he's like Eleonora comes over for for the summer, and to have a horse who rocks up and does what he's doing for her for her holidays, is you couldn't you know literally if you set out to buy one to do it you couldn't. You know, so it's been it's a great story. All roads leading to Champions Weekend for him. Yeah, he'll go for the Solna Way Stakes, but not good enough. <laughs> He's defied your expectations before, I think, at Verdes. Yeah, but there's a difference, Group Three and Group Two, and I would listen. When you put her colours on, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You came up with a great line, I think it was after he won the other night. You said the Galway Festival was a bit of a speed bump in your season. <laughs> does it feel like you're back in the fast lane? Eh? Yeah, it just was. We were flying along, and then that gets in the way, as it does for. Well, it does for me every year, and thankfully we're back rolling again. Jared, thanks so much. Very well done. Appreciate Cheers. It. Thanks, Cheers. Gary. Cheers. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.